Now let's just continue a little bit more on Alcoa, get some more details. Of course, Alcoa kicking off the third quarter earnings season that came just an hour, less than an hour ago. Numbers, as Courtney said, exceeding Wall Street expectations, We're talking about nine cents. So everyone was looking for five cents a share for the third quarter. Joining us via telephone now from Toronto, a money manager who says the global glut of aluminum could be a problem for Alcoa. Let's turn to John Stevenson. He runs the one and a half billion dollar first asset management fund. He's also the author of the book, The Little Book of Commodity Investing. John, welcome to Bloomberg. Welcome, Tim. Thank you very much. So, John, what do you make of the results from Alcoa? Is this uh, really just because of currency issues, or is there something more fundamental at work? Yeah, you know, I, I think it really uh, is fundamental. I think what they showed that was very positive and, and I think surprised the street to the upside was that the, the flat-rolled business just came on, on like gangbusters. And where they saw the growth was places like Russia, uh, China. And so, really, the end markets are showing strong demand in, in kind of their, their uh, primary metals division and in their uh, alumina division, they were kind of weak and they got impacted by, by those currency movements with a weaker U.S. dollar, a stronger Australian dollar being the primary driver there. Uh, but I think what you're seeing is, is uh, good, strong global growth, and, and that's a good news story for Alcoa and for uh, commodities in general. Now, uh, John, uh, to get a little more detail on Alcoa, I mean, they've gone through a major cost reduction effort. Are they going to start to really benefit from that? Are we going to see some expansion? expansion at Alcoa, at least in terms of the multiple, maybe? Yeah, I think you're, you you know this is clearly a stock that that's poised for some better times ahead for sure. I mean, keep in mind it was only a couple of years ago this was over forty dollars a share of this stock, and now of course it's in the twelve dollar range. Uh, so it's definitely on its way up again. Uh, I think they will start expanding, but for now they're going to hold the line on cost containment because that's the key. You know, by our estimate, some forty uh, percent of the industry is losing money at current aluminum prices. So we're going to have to wait to see some of the inventory in the LME bleed off a little bit has bled off so far. But we're going to have to see more of that before uh, prices can move significantly higher. John, you mentioned the markets in China as well as in Russia. Give us an update there. Are we seeing any activity in terms of domestic supply coming, let's say, out of China? Have they increased the use of their smelters? Actually, what they've been doing is uh, more environmental control uh, in uh, China. Uh, this is not only in the aluminum industry, but also in the steel industry. So in, in other words, uh, supply has uh, been a little more muted than we would expect. And one of the issues, of course, is can uh, and will China bring on uh, that supply uh, machine and, and really turn down what could be a nice rally in, in aluminum prices and for a COA shares. And I think the current thinking is that they're trying to get a hold of it. They've got too many smelters out there. It's too much of a, a wild west of smelting in, in China. And uh, ultimately, that will be a good story for, uh, for Alcoa and for aluminum prices going forward. John Stevenson, what about the actual price of aluminum? Are we going to see price increases? I think so. It's not going to happen right away because uh, there is a ton of it in stock right now and sitting in warehouses around the world. And we need to bleed through some of that. It has the worst fundamentals of any of the base metals in terms of the inventory overhang on it. But it is trending in the right direction. And so I would look for a lift in aluminum prices towards the back half of next year. Does that mean you'd look for a lift in the actual price of Alcoa? I mean, is this a good way to make money right now? Yeah, I think it is. I think this is good. And I think this quarter signals a couple things. One, it signals Number one, that uh, they can they can turn in some good numbers when, when they need to, and more importantly, this is a read through to the, the end markets, which are very strong. Automotive up 15 to 20 percent in China alone. Uh, heavy truck and trailer uh, up 35 to 40 in China. So you're seeing this strong demand uh, globally that's coming coming up there. Even Europe showed increases in sales of, in the beverage can and, and packaging group. So you're seeing stronger and stronger growth in the in the world, and that's a good news story for for industry. Uh, uh, globally. Uh, John Stevenson, the shares of Alcoa up 3% in after hours trading. Look into the future for us. Freeport McMoran, FCX, they're coming out with their results, what, on the 21st of the month. What are you going to see there? Are they going to show some surprises? I think they're going to show surprise to the upside as well. I think you're going to see uh, Freeport being another great earnings season. I, I think copper is, is probably the go-to base metal. We talked about aluminum having the worst fundamentals. Copper has the best, lowest inventories, most potential upside. I think you're going to be uh, pleasantly surprised when Freeport comes out. All right. We're going to look forward to having you with us. All right. Thanks very much, John Stevenson, coming to us from Toronto.